Coming up on the UB Football Insider Show with Lance Leipold, we'll look back at the Bulls' very impressive win over Temple. We'll break down a couple of the key plays in that victory, and we'll tell you if that win can propel the Bulls into Mid-American Conference play that starts this weekend against Miami. Plus, you'll meet the hard-hitting Bull safety who keeps dishing out the bank shots. It's all coming up on the UB Football Insider. The Bulls playing host to the 2-0 Temple Owls today. Big test for the Bulls in their final non-conference game. I think it's a big test for the mental aspect of this team. They got to bounce back after last week being a little overconfident. Shotgun snap to Russo, rush coming from the outside, balls are loose, knocked away by Ladarius Mack, and recovered by the Bulls. Gets it, read option, handoff, Patterson, bounces to the right side and into the end zone, bullseye. Great read by Dev Russell, and then he just undercuts the receiver on the outside. We had to have guys step up. Tim Terry with his first career sack for the Bull. Handoff, fake it, quick throw, wide open at the 10. Down to the five, Carlton Todd. Myers hands it to Marks, Marks backs in. Touchdown! We got guys that have taken advantage of opportunities. We make clutch plays. Second down, shotgun snap, Russo in the pocket, fires towards the end zone, and that's intercepted! Really nice job there by Free Washington. He sees that one coming, makes a nice catch, and then stumbles into the end zone. That's a great job. We get a pick six. This is third and eight, Russo to throw. He is pressured, rolls to the left, and it's intercepted in the arms of Joey Banks at the 30, at the 20, at the 15, at the 10, bullseye! Banks makes a deposit for six in the end zone. So the Bulls are going to improve to two and two on the season. And you have got to like what you have seen here today from Buffalo. The Bulls sitting pretty right now. Hey, 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 hey. Once again, awful proud of you. Yeah. All for one on two, one, two, oh, one. Well, Coach, congratulations on a very big and significant win over Temple to wrap up non-conference play. Um, there were so many things that went well in that Temple game. To have it be a victory in your last non-conference game, how much of a boost can that be as you head into the max schedule? Well, a big boost, especially after you know the way the Liberty game went, uh, the second half of Penn State. We needed something to create momentum as we headed into conference play and, and to play that well and, and win by that margin definitely can help us. Your defense, which did not have an interception in the first three games, comes up with three of them, part of four takeaways and another terrific effort in stopping the run. How well is your defense playing right now? Well, they, they play extremely well on Saturday. That's one of the things we talked about on Sunday when we came back, uh, looking at the Liberty film, looking at the overall of three games that we hadn't had any, any interceptions. Um, a couple fumble re recoveries. We needed to turn the ball, create some turnovers. They answered that. And I thought it was interesting that you obviously came out with the intention of running, and then as the game went on, it was clear that you were going to run, and Temple knew you were going to run, but they couldn't stop you. And now you have the max number one rushing offense and top 20 in the country. Well, you know, we're going to run the football. I don't think that's going to be a secret to anyone, but we we do want to still strive for balance and, and use things in play action. And But the game played out in such a way, and you know, we got ahead by two two scores and then we're going to run the ball to create some momentum and and then next thing you know we're, we're still creating the right down and distance on the ground we stayed with it well the offense and the defense did their part but maybe the key to the victory over temple were the bulls special teams and particularly one of the biggest plays of the game i i believe that's jackson balter yes not mcnulty but balter will try a 53 yard field goal this is his first career field goal attempt from the hold of Dominic Johnson, 53 yards away, Balter, line drive, kick towards the goal post, and it's good! Jackson Balter with a 53-yard field goal, one yard shy of the Buffalo record! Time out on the well, you may have heard in my voice a little bit of the uh, the wow moment that that was for Jackson Balter. Not only he tries his first ever collegiate field goal, but you roll him out there for a 52-yarder. I guess I really didn't think about all that at the moment, but uh, you know, really credit Jackson, uh, you know, for for answering the, the bell, so to speak, on that. We, you know, the week before Liberty.
Liberty, we we missed, you know, Alex McDonald, we missed two or three field goals. They had a great competition, very close competition in fall camp. We decided to reopen some things, and, uh, you know, Jackson won it. It was a close again, and uh, we gave him the opportunity, and like I said, he nailed it. You know, how much of a huge boost at the time of the game at that moment, not only to make the field goal to get the points, but to have it be this incredible long field goal, it turned the momentum, didn't it? It did. It gave us some confidence, much needed confidence. You know, what the kickers do, Paul, is, you know, for the game, they kick on each side of the field. We play the wind conditions, whatever. And then they'll let me know the yard line that the ball needs to be at that they feel is the, you know, the end of their range, so so to speak. And 35-yard line was it. And, you know, and so we put Jackson out there. And like I said, he, he was spot on. He was also a part of an effective punting game between himself and Kyle Van Trees and kickoffs. You didn't really get Temple's outstanding returner, Isaiah Wright, much of a chance to do too much damage so that's why we talk about special teams really played a big role in winning this game they did they had one little one kick return probably a little more than we had hoped but uh alex mcnulty had touchbacks i think on every other one um kyle van trees now second full game punting um you know was definitely had you know especially the one from the end zone i think was one that really helped us and then uh, we use jackson balter sometimes in a pin punt situation we may use both punters all the rest of the year depending on situations We talked about the outstanding defensive effort with the three interceptions, but the final interception really put a final note on this Big Bulls win. On third down, this is third and eight. Russo to throw. He is pressured, rolls to the left, and it's intercepted in the arms of Joey Banks at the 30, at the 20, at the 15, at the 10. Bullseye! Banks makes a deposit for six in the end zone. The ball gets deflected and it falls right into the lap of Joey Banks and all he sees is that blue end zone and takes it the rest of the way. Well, that might have been Joey Banks' easiest interception, popped right into his hands, but still, you got to make the catch and you got to take it back and score. Yeah, you know, he did a great job. You know, Joey's played really consistent football now for really all four games. To, To make a play like that, I think it might be his second interception since he's been here, and to take it the distance uh, was kind of the exclamation point on the day. Joey tells me that you guys at practice call him the Tasmanian Devil. Can you uh, can you enlighten us on that? Well, yeah, like for Joey to get an interception and take it for six is really not what Joey's known for. He, Joey's more of a he's a hitter. He likes to get in there and thump it. I, I think he's a safety in a middle linebacker's body <laughs> or, or vice versa, whatever that may be. But he uh, he likes the contact part of things, and uh, you know, like I said. That he's really come into his own this so far this part of the year. All your defensive backs said it was really bugging them that they had not had an interception yet. So it sounds like that was some motivation for getting three of them this week. Yeah, it was. I, you know, we kind of said that after the Liberty game that one of the things that was hurting us a little bit was we weren't creating turnovers, um, and you know they, they responded well to the challenge. And I, I thought we played well all day. But it's not just the secondary; it's the front four getting pressure. It's the linebackers in the blitz game and under coverages. All those things came together really well. Yeah, it was an outstanding defensive effort and the Bulls will need more of that when they open up Mid-American Conference play this Saturday on the road at Miami. It's a noon start. You can hear the game on ESPN 1520. You can see it on ESPNU. Coach, thank you. You're welcome. Coming up, head coach Lance Leipold previews the Mid-American Conference opener, UB versus Miami. That's next on UB Football Insider. Game day returns to UB Stadium on Saturday, October 5th when the UB football team hosts Mack Rival Ohio for the annual homecoming game presented by Town Auto. Throws to the left, wide open, bullseye! Before kickoff, enjoy a tailgate concert by local 80s band Nerds Gone Wild along with food trucks, kid-friendly entertainment, and more. Round up your friends and family, wear your best blue and white to UB Stadium and cheer on the Bulls. Kickoff is at 3.30 p.m. For tickets, call 1-877-UB-THERE or visit UBBulls.com. Welcome back to UB Football Insider. This segment is presented by Seth Q, changing lives every day. Welcome back to the UB Football Insider Show with Lance Leipold. We're inside the Murchie Family Fieldhouse. Mac play begins for the Bulls on Saturday when they go to Oxford, Ohio to take on the Miami Redhawks. It's been a great rivalry over the years between these two teams, but both teams have suffered significant graduation losses. Key players have moved on, but Miami Redhawks head coach Chuck Martin says it's time for some new heroes to emerge. 
there's kids in both programs that, that left at, via graduation, transfer, whatever, that were great players. But I know there's other players that are in both these programs that they're not, they're going to be excited to be on the field today and play the, play the game, you know. Them coming in here, well, it's going to take 60 minutes, and who knows if it's going to be high scoring or low scoring. Last year was high scoring, but um, both teams are capable of playing either style, and it's going to be a 60 minute knockdown drag out, and somebody's going to make one more play than somebody else. All right, it's time to dive into this weekend's matchup with the Miami Red Hawks. It's part of our town, Chevy, Buick, Cadillac, keys to the game. Preseason polls, some of them had your team second in the MAC East. Others had Miami second in the MAC East, and the other ones were flipped. So this is a very interesting way to start your MAC schedule against a team that uh, not only are you very competitive with, but I know that you are going to battle down the stretch for the MAC East title. Well, they're they're an excellent football team, as you know. We know if they've had a very challenging non-conference schedule. Um, I think our teams match up well. We've had great ball games with them in the past, and to have to go on the road and to open up conference play with them is is definitely going to be a challenge well you mentioned their non-conference schedule they are coming off a 75 to 6 loss to ohio state they've also played cincinnati they've also played iowa do you have a hard time figuring out exactly who they are because of who they've played um you know you know maybe in some ways that there's some matchups you may want to look at they you know they played a lot of people at ohio state they held some starters out so that one's probably not as much as you look at but first game of the year you're looking you know every Everything's new. You, you get a good evaluation on th some things there. Tennessee Tech was their FCS home game. But Cincinnati's a good matchup, close game for them. You know they're going to be up for that game. I think there's, you know, there, there's some good film there to watch. And, of course, uh, you know, the great game that we had with them last year that was a, uh, really a, a fun one to watch, a great matchup, of two good teams playing well at that time of yeah, year. Yeah, that was the 51-42 Bulls victory. But what's interesting about, as you look at that game from last year, so many of the key players on both sides, on both teams, have moved on and have graduated. Not only great players, but great leaders. So are there, is that another? Another parallel between your team and the Red Hawks? Well, I think so. I think probably one of the things everybody's going to look at is it's a, a true freshman quarterback and a redshirt freshman quarterback that are both both look to have bright futures ahead of them. And so, yeah, there's a different complexion to it. But um, you know, but then when you really keep looking, there's there's some good linemen on both sides of the ball for both teams that uh, that are going to make it interesting and have been very productive. Brett Gabbard is the name of the freshman quarterback that coach alludes to. If the name sounds familiar, he is the brother of NFL quarterback Blaine Gabbard. Uh, he's been impressive as a freshman. So has your freshman or redshirt freshman, in this case, Matt Myers. Is that is that a little bit of an indication of where this sport is going and where the player's talent is going, that this is a matchup of two freshman quarterbacks? Well, I think it's what you've seen between, it's a credit to high school coaches and high school programs, camps, developments, everything that, that goes on in the world today that players are ready at that position more so than ever um, sometimes when you have upperclassmen quarterbacks you're the next couple classes behind them um, you know guys are may, maybe not getting as as much playing time or or, or don't stay with it um, so you, you never know what each quarterback room across the country looks like but these two young men have shown that they're they're more than capable of being productive in the mid-american conference yeah and for any bulls fan that may be looking at what miami did or did not do in the beginning of the year I, i'll throw this stat at you they are 16 and 6 in their last 22 Mac game. So Chuck Martin, as their head coach, has a really good ability of getting their guys to flip the switch. How much of a challenge is that for a head coach, particularly at a Mac level where those early season games may be awfully difficult? Yeah, I think he's handled it extremely well. I think he's probably broken it up into two separate seasons and and you know many times you break it in the you know four quarters of you know the 12 game schedule it could be four quarters it can be you know three uh, you know thirds of non-conference four non-conference games a lot of ways to do it but whatever he's doing he's done a great job of getting them to kind of forget forget the non-conference flush it away and move on to conference play all right going to be a good one mac opener the bulls and the red hawks coach good luck thank you very much Paul. all right that's bulls head coach lance leipold don't forget you can see the game on ESPNU. You can hear it on ESPN 1520 and you can also sync up our call of the Bulls football broadcast with the video for your best coverage of the Bulls. Coming up, it's a Bulls digital biography. Safety Joey Banks shares his UB football story next.
Welcome back to UB Football Insider. This segment is presented by Town BMW, the official auto partner of UB Athletics. Welcome back to the UB Football Insider Show with Lance Leipold. My name is Paul Peck from inside the Murchie Family Fieldhouse. Last year, Bull Safety Joey Banks wore number 22. Well, this year he is dressed to the nines with what he calls a hitter's number. Well, he has done plenty of that and helped lead the Bulls to the max number one defensive ranking. Let's meet the Bulls hard hitting safety. Joey Banks, number 22 play safety and I'm on the UB football team. Rushed again is Lazaro. He'll roll to the right. He'll roll. Now he'll throw and it's incomplete. Tipped and intercepted. Joey Banks. I grew up in Sacramento, California, or El Grove specifically. Yeah, I started football at age seven and I hated football. That was one sport I did not like. I did not like contact. It's funny that that's the one thing I love about football now is the contact and the physicalness. I started off playing on the line because I didn't know anything else. And I never used to block. I always used to stand up when the ball was hiked and look at the running backs run. <laughs> the first sport I started um, was wrestling. My dad wrestled in college. And then my mom played uh, softball in college. So I got thrown into baseball after wrestling. Wrestling was probably like my biggest sport, especially when it comes to tackling and football. I think my peewee year, that team in that season kind of like changed my look on football and my really my life at that point it just grew from there to be honest my parents you know they want they wanted the best for me you know they were never going to force me to do something i didn't want to do or i didn't love or have interest in with me choosing football and stuff you know they grew to love it and just, they see my passion in football so coming out of high school um i ended up going to sac state but something just didn't sit right with me you know i, I didn't feel like the, the culture was matching what I had in my eyes as far as like the football aspect of things. And um, so I chose to transfer to City College. That's the City College of San Francisco, the same school as former Bulls linebacker Khalil Hodge. I ended up transferring here uh, after my second season at City College to Buffalo. Hodge actually, you know, influenced me to come here. What influenced me to come to Buffalo was just a feeling that I had when I took a visit here. And something just told me, you know, this is this is where I'm supposed to be. Thus far, it's been the best decision I've made. I got my undergrad in psychology. Um, right now, I'm in uh, urban planning and economic develop development for my master's. I want to do a lot of things, um, which is why, you know, I chose economic development and uh, real estate. Now the kid who didn't like contact is the biggest hitter for the Bulls. I love to hit. I love contact. I love to be aggressive. I love making plays. I just love being around the ball whenever I can. Being a more vocal leader than just leading by example is going to help as well. Someone who's who's really good at you know being disciplined and, and becoming a leader. He's a young guy. His name's James Patterson. I, I love how he carries himself. You know his he, he, how he works. He doesn't shy down from any competition or contact or anything like that. But I feel like we have the potential to be a lot closer. That's just going to make us a lot better on defense. Team expectations, you know, we just want to be better in, in every aspect of the game. We want to improve on last year. We want to win the MAC championship. We want, we want to win the ball game. First thing, I just want to make a big stride compared to last year. Well, Joey Banks comes from Sacramento, California. How'd you wind up with him here in Buffalo? Interesting story, Paul. He, he started off his career at Sacramento State, an FCS program. Uh, started and played some, played against the Pac-12 uh, schools and, and started ball games. was injured and then decided to move to City College of San Francisco where Khalil Hodge played his junior college ball. I think uh, Khalil's success and experience here and, and his, relaying that to the coaches kind of, you know, got on got on Joey's radar. Chris Simpson was was the lead coach in the recruiting of Joey, came out for the visit, uh, saw the opportunity to help our team, and, you know, he's been a great addition. He already has his degree, taking graduate classes. Uh, he's a fine young man with a bright future he's a hard hitting safety how much of a tone does that set for your defense it you know I think a lot of our players you know kind of thrive off of watching him make those plays and you know he once he sees run now he I, I don't know if I've been around a safety that ends up at the line of scrimmage making tackles with the authority that he does and I think everyone it, it can fire up a defense can fire up a team you know even in this past game he used him a little bit as a 
linebacker. So you're, is that one way to take advantage of that skill around the line of scrimmage with him? Yeah, and that's something that he likes. And, you know, Joey was a little taller or something, you know, and, and you know, you know he still he runs well. He does a lot of th- good things in coverage. Um, if it was early in our days, much like we did with Jordan Collier, you know, he, he might have been a guy playing that rover position. So we try to use him in some different spots. Um, but, uh, you know, he's kind of a hybrid guy, and we'll find as many ways to get him around the football as we can. Well, that's usually where you can find number nine. You don't have to look much beyond wherever the football is. That's where Joey Banks is. He'll be a key player for the Bulls this Saturday against Miami. Coach, thanks for the time. Thank you, Paul. Coming up, Paul Peck takes a closer look at all the fall sports in action. UB Football Insider will be back right after this. Here at UB, we are asking the big questions. We're looking at the forces that surround us. We're questioning them and responding. How do we engage in the process of shaping the world to create the spaces and the environments we want to inhabit? The beauty of being a scholar has been to communicate beyond the disciplines. It only takes a few inspiring minds to make magic happen. There's no limit to what you can discover. This is UB Football Insider, presented by ECMC. The difference between healthcare and true care. From inside the Murchie Family Fieldhouse, welcome back to the UB Football Insider Show with Lance Leipold. A big win for football, a big-time matchup for soccer, and a big comeback for volleyball. All part of last week in UB Athletics. The week was highlighted by the football team's 38-22 victory over Temple. The Bulls forced four turnovers on defense and offensively ran for 217 yards. They finished the non-conference part of their schedule 2-2, and and the Bulls have now won nine of their last 10 games at UB Stadium. The soccer team took a trip out west and battled Oregon of the Pac-12. They led for most of the match on Marcy Barbaric's goal, but the Ducks scored late and then won it in overtime 2-1. The Bulls finished the non-conference part of their schedule. Three wins, three losses, and a tie. Volleyball won two of their three matches this weekend at the Blue and White Classic. They swept St. Francis and they battled back for a five-set victory over Canisius. Now the Bulls put their focus on Mid-American Conference play, which begins this weekend. The UB cross-country teams were in Boston this past weekend for the coast-to-coast battle in Beantown. The high-level competition was a good test for the young Bulls. Caleb Covell of the UB men's team led the way with a 29th place finish. So now the real season begins for Lance Leipold's Bulls. Their next eight games, and maybe nine, will come against Mid-American Conference opponents, and it starts on Saturday with a trip to Oxford, Ohio, as the Bulls take on the Miami Red Hawks. It's a noon kickoff that you can hear on ESPN 1520, and you can see it on ESPNU. Maction is ready to get rolling, and we'll see you next week on the UB Football Insider.